So, so this is interesting that, you know, in a world of uh, globalisation and, and the idea that, um, you know, everybody can tap into the uh, streaming of an opera or whatever it is, that we're you know, online, everything's accessible from everywhere. You're actually looking at a much more localised, uh, in a way, much more kind of, uh, you know, uh, sort of independent high street type uh, experience than, than, uh, than a global experience. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And because I think... Um, in opera, well, arts uh, arts viewing anyway is an, is a personal thing, um, and you can make a collective. I think if you're in one place, because you can tap into what that city, that community are, are talking about. You know what are the the issues, and you can formulate your programming accordingly. Um, and I think that is the way to go, um, because, precisely because so much is available anyway. Um, to, to make a, a real mark in people's lives, I think you need to, we now need to be speaking to them as individuals, not as, as, a, as a mass market. So, so rather than thinking of these things as tours, um, are you almost thinking them, uh, of them as sort of local festivals, as almost sort of, you know, you're, you're kind of embedding yourself yeah. in communities rather than thinking of yourself as the great national company that's being sort of, you know, telling everybody what, 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 what do you think, sort of thing? You know, absolutely. And, you know, in New Zealand, what was interesting, we, although we played in Auckland and Wellington and later Christchurch, um, we used the local symphony orchestra and had, had a chorus in each city. And the difference was remarkable because each city considered the opera company theirs, whereas the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra and Royal New Zealand Ballet, who tour, they were just they were deemed national companies based in Wellington. Um, and their respective CEOs said to me, you know, we really envy you the um, the attachment which your company has felt in those cities. That, you know, they're Wellington, but Wellington based, and they, they felt they can never sort of get inside the skin of the Auckland market. And Auckland is a third of the population, so it's the important city. Um, and I think that, that's a lesson learned there, that you, you need as a company to have some genuine, authentic link with the audience you're, you're dealing with. Otherwise, you are just a touring company, like a big touring musical coming through as well. Um, and if we want to offer something which is higher than just the entertainment proposition of, you know, of Les Mis, um, then it's important to, to, to have tools to make those connections. So we've decided, we, we can't do these hubs everywhere, so we've decided on, on key zones, Cardiff, of course, North Wales, because half our, arts, our money comes from Arts Council Wales, and two strategic areas in in England, i.e. the West Midlands and the South West, which is very underserved anyway. So we're making a decision to do that. So uh, it's interesting, this idea of a national company, because you are Welsh National Opera. Yeah. I, mean, I remember once talking to uh, somebody who runs English National Opera about the fact that, you know, in what sense is it national? Yeah. I mean, it, uh, that, and I said, and they, they said he would never tour. They said, well, we, we do go to the old, old Vic, or the, the, you know, the young Vic to do, to, and I said, well, you know, that's, that's half a mile away from, from, from it's hardly touring. Um, so, I mean, how much responsibility do you feel you have to Wales as, you know, as, as a big cultural institution in Wales, and how much do you have to sort of, in a way, reflect the Welsh aspirations for culture? Yeah. Well, uh, firstly, this Hubs model is really helping us do that, because uh, you're right, I think, uh, when I think back to 30 years ago when I worked there, you know, there was a genuine discussion as whether we should move to Birmingham, because it made more sense for, for a touring perspective. Um, and I think the... I think the Welshness of Welsh National Opera over those 30 years has ebbed and flowed a bit. Um, but now we're in a, a world where it's very important. You know, Welsh language standards are, are part of our work. We, we need to be, if not bilingual per se, but b have a respect for the Welsh language e and give it equal importance to the English language. Um, and in, with a devolved government, it's quite interesting how um, their international strategy we were mentioned as a, as a as a national asset and um we we actually entered in discussion with the new opera house in in morocco in rabat in Rabocca. we uh, morocco we took we took the orchestra over there uh, it's actually by zaha hadid uh, ironically and yeah. it's an extraordinary building um and it was interesting they were very keen uh, on us coming and i'm sure we will end up going there um precisely they said because a you're not london and B, that you are a national company, not a company just of a city. So this was very important. And I think um, 
you know, especially with Brexit, it's one, one uh, aspect of our work that can greatly help the Welsh economy and act as, as um, um, flag bearers, if you like, for, for Wales on an international scale. You know, touring an opera company is expensive for anybody, but I think that it was clear, and also Dubai, you know, we, we actually have a new work which is going to be part of a Dubai Expo, which got cancelled, is now in 2021. But again, they were very taken by the idea of a national company, not, you know, just from Hamburg or wherever, or, or Bordeaux. But um, that, uh, and, and the Welsh government certainly are, um, you know, helping us in that. They have a base in Dubai anyway. Um, so that international diplomacy element of, of us is an important part.